Let's do some alcohol dehydration reactions together. As I've said before in some other videos, make sure you're mixing up your practice so that you're not always, when you go to do practice, doing the exact same kind of problems, because you do want to make your brain have to identify what kind of problem it is as well. But all of these are going to be alcohol dehydration reactions. So starting with the first one, now you can see I've already translated it into a, um, a structural formula because sometimes that's a little bit easier for, for me in terms of visualizing, especially when the hydrogens are involved. So let's look at what it says here. Complete the following elimination reaction. Now notice it's like, oh, not a dehydration. Is this a different kind of reaction? Well, a dehydration is a type of elimin re elimination reaction in the exact same way that like hydration was a type of an addition reaction. Dehydration is in a type of eliminating, and it's really the opposite of an addition reaction. It's taking away things from the, from the molecule to result in a slightly different molecule that, that we've lost something. And it's a dehydration reaction when what we're eliminating then is a water molecule. We're dehydrating it, so we know that we're going to get water out of it. So let's kind of then walk through what we might do here, how we might approach this. So I am dehydrating this, and as you can see here, we have a strong acid, H2SO4. Sometimes you might just see the H+. Um, usually these do require some heat too. I'm gonna go ahead and add that. Um, you wouldn't need to. You could have just completed it here with the line formula, but I wanted to really draw our attention to um, what's going on here and what we're looking at and looking for. So I said we're gonna make water, so let's go ahead and put that there because we're dehydrating it. We're eliminating water from the molecule. And that water, if we wanna think of water maybe like this, H bonded to a hydroxyl group, that tells us that we are going to be taking that away. So that's one of the things, it's gonna be the one that makes that here. And then, um, then we need to account for the hydrogen. Now, an important thing for these elimination reactions, these dehydration reactions, as opposed to some of the other reactions that we've looked at, like oxidation, it's not a hydrogen from the carbonyl carbon. So that's really important, not these hydrogens. So we're not taking a hydrogen from the carbonyl carbon, we're taking a hydrogen from a carbon on either side of the carbonyl carbon. Now there is no, this is a primary alcohol, it says that there, but I can recognize that here. There is no carbon on the other side of the carbonyl carbon, so it does actually have to be one of these two hydrogens. And it, it doesn't really matter which one in this, in this sense. So when I go to draw then my product over here, and you could draw it in line formula, you could continue with the expanded, you could mix it around, it doesn't really matter. So um, I'm gonna end up with a carbon, a carbon, and these two carbons, this carbon one and carbon two, or really they'd technically be carbon four and carbon three, they're completely unaffected. So they end up with the exact same number of hydrogens that they would have. This carbon is down a hydrogen though, because we're gonna get a double bond in its place. Because in losing, let's say this one is the one that left, it doesn't really matter, here it's this one. In losing that, we get an electron then that's gonna come down here, and in losing this, we get an electron that's gonna come down here. And we get the reverse of an addition reaction where we actually are closing the drawbridge. So now this carbon, has just two hydrogens off of it, so we don't have an opportunity for geometric um, isomerism there. And then this carbon is down a hydrogen as well. And so you can see I created an alkene. So I went from this one butanol to one butene um, through my dehydration or elimination reaction of my primary alcohol. Now let's look at one where we have to consider Zaitsev's rule. We didn't have to consider it here because there was only one carbon option for the hydrogen. But if we have a, if we have essentially anything other than a, pri a primary alcohol, we might have we might have to consider Zaitsev's rule. So in this, it says show both the major product and the minor product of the dehydration reaction started below. So if I were taking a test or quiz, one of the first things I do is I would circle, highlight, underline, or just sometime, somehow um, 
draw my brain's attention to that dehydration because that's going to tell me what you know one of the things I'm working with right away we'll do purple this time so I'm dehydrating so I know I'm getting a water right <laughs> I'm going to put that there now where did that water come from I know so this is my carbonyl carbon right here carbonyl carbon and it does not have any other hydrogens so this is a you know it's uh, it's because it's got it's bonded to one two three four things already so that's that's it it's a tertiary so my options here so it, we're gonna lose this this is gonna go away that's gonna be part of the thing so either this carbon we'll do carbon one or carbon three these are my choices should we put in the hydrogens? Let's go ahead and put in the hydrogens so that we can visualize a little bit better what we're dealing with. Line formulas are really good in my opinion. I love them until I'm trying to focus on hydrogens and then their, their absence kind of tricks my brain a little bit. So let's actually just go ahead and make the two products and then we'll talk about major and minor. So if this car hydrogen leaves to make the water, so that would be on carbon one, our double bond, I like to sometimes even kind of draw in those arrows of saying, oh, electrons come down here to make a double bond. We're going to end up with a double bond there. So um, I have one, two, three, four, five. That shouldn't change. So one, two, three, four, five. Um, the methyl group here off of carbon two is unaffected. Now I did lose that OH, so I don't want that OH anymore in my product here. So make sure you cross it off or you know draw your diagram of it visually leaving if that helps you out. Uh, don't, don't just bring it over just because it was here, but don't forget substituents um, that weren't affected by the chemistry. Now the other option, so the other option is that the hydrogen be taken here from carbon three. So in that case, Let's change color to kind of, if that happens, my double bond is going to end up in a different location. So let's say this carbon, this hydrogen leaves. And so I would get that. So let's, let's draw that structure. Forgot how many carbons I have. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. But a double bond here between carbon two and three. Instead, no change on my methyl group don't have a hydroxyl group anymore. So you can see these are structural isomers of each other. They're not the same compound because here my double bond is between carbon one and two, and here my double bond is between carbon two and three. So then the next question would be, okay, let's identify, it asks us to show, but I think we should also uh, practice that rule, identify what's the major and what's the minor product using, using that it's not the same as Markovnikov's. Zaitsev's rule is different, but it, it, to me it's the other side of that coin. Since we had to consider Zaitsev's rule in the addition reaction of alkenes, we have to consider, um, sorry, Markovnikov's, we have to consider Zaitsev in, the, in that reverse, which is what a dehydration of an alcohol is. It's a, it's a reverse of the hydration reaction that we saw. So Zaitsev's rule states that the most substituted um, product is going to be the one. I have, I have a little trouble visualizing kind of what that means, which one is technically the most substituted. So as I've shared, I like to think of it as a reverse of Markovnikov's rich get rich, the poor get poorer. So in this first one, this carbon one, carbon one here has three hydrogens and carbon one, two, three, which is my other option, has had two. So two hydrogens. So who's poorer in carbons? Well, carbon or in hydrogen, sorry, they're just one carbon. Um, carbon three is poorer in hydrogens because it only has two. So carbon three is going to get its hydrogen taken away more often than carbon one because the poor get poorer. That makes this the major product and this the minor product. And then in terms of what Zaitsev's rule does actually say, I can see, okay, so yeah, this one is here, the double bond is more, uh, has more things, more alkyl groups off of it, because it has this, this one, our double bond has one, two, three alkyl groups off of it, whereas here, our double bond only has one, two. So I can even translate it into the actual 
um, language of Zaitsev's rule, but I do like to think of it as the poor get poorer. So next question, how would you prepare cyclohexene from the dehydration of an alcohol? So again, if I'm taking a test or quiz, um, there's a couple words that I would really try to draw my brain's attention to. The first one here is prepare. So when you see something that where it says, how would you prepare this? That tells you that this is the product in the reaction. So that it should be on the left side of my arrow. arrow. So if I were going to go draw this, this should be over here. And I, I see that a lot of people will start, they start with it as a reactant and then they, they'll go to make an alcohol, but this is about preparing this structure. So cyclohexene needs to be over here, it's my product. Another thing I would want to draw my attention to is this right here, dehydration of an alcohol. So I know I want an alcohol as a reactant and I want the way that it's producing this cyclohexene to be through dehydration. So through the removal of a water. So, so we're actually essentially writing a chemical equation, but backwards. So let's get started on that. Let's start with um, cyclohexene. So cyclo, that's the word I've shared with you. I'm the most likely to forget. So I want to immediately go, okay, this is a cyclic structure. So I'm going to draw my cyclic six carbon ring and then it has a double bond it doesn't matter where I put it because they're automatically carbon one and two so all of those carbons are equivalent and then dehydration so I should be losing a water molecule as well so how do I how do I get from I, I need an alcohol over here and it needs to be a dehydration reaction for making that alkene. Well, I know that in general, dehydration requires some catalysts. It usually requires an acidic kick in the pants and um, often heat. And the level of heat would be dependent on um, usually the, the type of alcohol I'm dealing with. So how could this structure, how can I take this and kind of think about what alcohol could make it? Well, it, I can't draw like a linear structure, right? You know, in general, uh, this isn't going to take a linear thing and, and, and make it cyclic. So let's go ahead and start by drawing a cyclic, you know, a cyclic structure that's a, a hexyl, cyclohexic structure. So I've got that. Um, and I know that it should be an alcohol. So let's just go ahead and put a hydroxyl group on it. And then let's consider then these reactions that we've been looking at. So um, I'm going to put in just some hydrogens on a few of these so I can think about dehydrating it. And let's see if this works. So if I take away, we'll go green, if I lose this hydroxyl group to make the OH of the water. And remember, it's not the carbonyl carbon that is lost in the dehydration reaction. It is carbon, the, the carbon immediately adjacent to the carbonyl carbon on either side. Well, in this case, it actually doesn't matter which, car, which hydrogen might be lost in that process. It would result in this compound either way. So you can think about it, if I take this and it leaves, and the double bond is here, that would be this molecule because each of these is equivalent. If I take this and it's the one that leaves and the double bond is here, that is this one as well because each of those positions is equivalent. So you want to be able to write reactions forward, but you also kind of want to be able to write reactions backwards because that can help you in considering how would I prepare this molecule. So let me know if you still have questions.